Hey, what's up everybody? I had a great question last week on Photoshop process, so I did a video about that, put it up, and following that question there was a question about the mixer brush, which I totally should have covered. So here is a quick little check-in about the mixer brush. Um, so I busted this out last night. I did my first Twitch stream, which was really fun. Um, absolutely no one saw it, but it was really cool because I got to figure out the technology, get all my streaming stuff set up, and it was awesome. So I had a lot of fun with that. And um, I got to paint this picture from, um, it's from Montserrat. It's a monastery outside of Barcelona, just kind of above the city and the mountains. And it's very beautiful. And I did kind of like a, it's a, the perspective's a little off in my painting because I painted it from a weird angle as I was trying to get, I was trying to dual record to Instagram as well. So it was, but either way, you know, fun stuff. Check out this area of the painting. This is where I want to do a little bit of my, um, demonstration. I'm going to duplicate the layer, do a little demonstration of this whole mixer brush business. So here in Photoshop, I have the window set up to workspace and painting, which I love because I get just the really important palettes for, for painting over there. And then I have my toolbar, which is minimized and just kind of dedicated for a painter. Got paintbrush. That's what I did all this stuff with. And I'm going to use the mixer brush to just kind of throw in some flourishes here. So using a, a kind of a square basic brush. Let me show you the texture of it and just some obnoxious color here. So you can see um, the brush I'm using looks like this when pressing firmly and it looks like this when pressing gently. So um, when the mixer brush is used, pushing firmly, pushing gently. Very similar, right? That's because I've got it set to dry. You can set the mixer brush to dry, moist, wet, and very wet. Let's check out the opposite end of the spectrum. A lot of mixing going on, pushing firmly. A little bit of mixing going on, pushing softly. So that's the far edge of the spectrum. Here's that kind of next step away from the dry brush. And you can see that everything in between works pretty well. Um, let's see what we can do with this very wet brush. and. Um, I think it might be important to do some demonstration of this brush with a different tool as well. So I'm going to go big here and just show you how those edges get really, really gummed up and can get really foggy really quickly. So when using the mixer brush, there's a lot more to consider because Photoshop is doing its best job of replicating wet media. It's a really good dry media simulator. And when it comes to the wet media, it's not as good. So you have to be pretty thoughtful about what brush you're going to use and in what, to what capacity you're going to use the mixer brush, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's much better to stick with your standard brush for most of the painting and then do some touch up with the mixer brush. Right now I'm using it at a very wet with this nice bristle brush that comes from um, the brushes I, I linked to in the previous video. So you can see the difference between previous layer and this one. They're just duplicated, but what I've done is just done some mixer brush softening of these edges, knocking down some of the texture. Now the, the thing you got to know about the mixer brush is it's going to sample from the colors, or I should say the, the pixel colors on the layer that you have active. So let's say, for example, over here, I want to sample from, like using the Alt key, you get a little target, and I want to sample from this planter. I tap it. Looks like I'm getting a color, but really I'm not. If you look up here, the checkerboard means no, nothing's happening. So I go over here to paint, and it's just going to be a kind of a smudge tool. Should I come over here and tap here, you're going to see that the color I get is, it's like getting a paint swatch that's the equivalent of all the pixel data that you have right in that chunk. So as I start to paint there, I'm not just going to get green, but I'm going to get these dark greens, blacks, and everything together. That can be really cool. So let me do this and go over to dry so you can see this a little bit more fully. Look at that brush stroke. The cool thing about that is that stroke looks a little bit more, in fact, a lot more like natural media paint where you don't have a perfect mix of a color. Oftentimes your pile of paint on your palette has a little bit of variation in the greens or in the blues or in the tans or whatever. So you can use that to your advantage and paint with the mixer brush like a dry brush, like a standard brush, but you get some of the variation in the strokes 
that looks a little more naturalistic. So I like it in that capacity. When it gets really wet, um, I, I, I can see the virtue of it. Like in this case, just knocking down that edge is kind of nice because you, you want to be very careful in a painting that your edges don't all look the same, that you have good softness in your edges as things recede or become, you know, they're not the focal point and stuff like that. So um, you can use the mixer brush to great effect when used sort of sparingly. I wouldn't go all in with it all the time because it just, um, if used too much, I think you can get too many foggy edges and it just doesn't look like your painting has any crispness. Um, so again, use the tool for sure, but know its limitations. Um, again, I'm gonna sample here and I'm gonna get nothing. So as I come over here, it's just gonna blend what's already there. My preference is let me go back here, go back to very wet again, just showing you how you can create these nice soft edges with this bristle brush. Different brushes are going to behave really differently. You have to control the moisture content, which is here, and how much it mixes with the brush here. And then in, you know, in addition to all that, you're going to have to modulate the pressure you're using because you can use it very gently and it'll just it'll just knock those edges down a tiny bit. But if you use this kind of at the heavy wet set or heavy or very wet setting and you're not careful, maybe you use too much pressure, it just starts to smudge all over the place. And maybe your oil painting illusion that you're creating starts to look a little bit like an overworked watercolor. And so you just have to be careful. Um, let me just kind of zoom out for a second and give you, well, I'll stay zoomed in and just check this out. There's the difference. Some mixer brush versus some not mixer brush. And you can see I'm playing with different settings. I'm doing some different things, but what I'm making sure I'm doing is using it as a final step. I really prefer to use it as a final step after I already have the canvas covered with color data, with value everywhere. And everything is, is, you know, complete in the sense that edge to edge top to bottom I have I have color and I have information there and then I can work on using the mixer brush just as an edge refinement tool so I can say ooh these transitions between here and here are too harsh I'm gonna go knock that down with the mixer brush in sort of easy mode for getting a softer edge um, I'm gonna go set this to dry and I'm gonna sort of like sample from here and see if I can start getting kind of a, a little bit more naturalistic or textural mark using some of just the benefits of the way it grabs color and see the difference here. You might like that little bit more chunky mark making that's afforded you by setting this to dry and then sampling from some of the local color and, and it, some of the variation that's embedded in that mark making might afford like kind of give you a little bit nicer effect. Um, here you can start to see that that effect might be more effective or less effective depending on what brush you have. But, you know, it's definitely sort of like another tool in your arsenal, which you definitely want. You know, you don't want to be feel like you're limited to just one way of working. Um, again, each brush is going to interact with that simulation of natural media in, in a different way. So, um yeah, I hope you like it. I hope you give it a shot. And if you find some tools that are working really well with the mixer brush, you know, something that just is like a great fit, you definitely throw that in the comments. Um, I think these, this brush that I'm using that I got from ArtStation is really, really great. And um, I think it works well both in the standard brush mode and the mixer brush mode. Here I'm using it with um, the sort of the moist settings and I'm still getting some nice texture and I, I still have some vocabulary and range with what you know what the brush can say as it moves around um, this is kind of an interesting approach usually I use this big chunky blocky brush to as my lay-in tool look I made it really obnoxiously huge so it looks a little bit like that when used at dry but when you use it in this very wet setting it it has is that kind of sfumato, um, smoky edged texture, which can be really good in a situation like this. I think um, it's, it's gonna come down to the interplay between the brush you select, the pressure you use, and the amount of moisture that you're trying to simulate. Um, 
So hopefully that's a help for you in the mixer brush. And remember, we've got sampling from, even though it looks like there's color data there, it's actually on a different layer. So that sample isn't gonna work. You have to be working directly on top of, or sampling directly from the layer that has the pigment on it. And then, um, Again, just I, I do it as a finishing layer touch up kind of thing. I don't like to go and lean on this tool as one of my primary go to's. I, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely use it um, for, for things here and there, but I use it with some, some economy, I guess is the word. You know, I use it with some restraint. Um, so hopefully that helps, and hopefully you guys are enjoying your time doing some digital painting. Uh, the comments have been amazing. I'm learning a ton and getting good feedback, good suggestions from people who are digging into ArtRage, digging into Photoshop, digging into all of this. I have some very traditional artists who, who are very talented, amazing artists who are joining the ranks of the digital art crew. That's been exciting. I'm trying to give those people a little, you know, comfortable head start so they feel like they're getting uh, some assistance because it can be kind of grueling to make that shift from paint and easel or, or or pencil and paper to something like this. So that's been fun. It's been fun all around. Um, as I start to, to do some things with live painting on Twitch, I'll make sure to put that in the, the um, comments or some scheduling going on so you guys know when that's going to happen if you're interested. Um, just having a lot of fun with all the possibilities here. I want to say thank you so much for your interest and your kindness and uh, your your passion for the arts. It really is encouraging me and keeps me making these videos. We have, right now we've got a little one, uh, just a two-year-old, and we have um, some family members who have been fighting some pretty in intense long-term illnesses and you know, working as a full-time instructor. So there is no... Um, I mean, there's like no free time in life right now. But that said, um, my you know my my the, my time to read books and and to do kind of like hang out downtime has gone. But I think it's a worthwhile sacrifice to do it, to to give it up for the purpose of doing more artwork um, and to and to share that with y'all. So I'm pumped and I'm super glad to hear that it's it's connecting with some of you guys. So. Thank you again and take care. Have an awesome night.